It started as your typical, normal high school relationship. We were texting all the time, um, saw each other every day. He would get me flowers all the time. We just were inseparable friends. He began to change, just became very jealous and controlling. He didn't want me to succeed ahead of him. The verbal and emotional abuse ended up turning physical. The only way to describe how I felt during all this time was trapped. There was no way out. I didn't know if I was to tell anybody, he said he would kill them. If I was to tell my mom, he would hunt my mom down. He told me, quote unquote, I know where you work, I know where you live, I know where you go to school and who you hang out with. If you leave me or tell anybody, I will find you and either make your life a living hell or I will kill you. Melissa Dome's chilling encounter doesn't end there. On January 24, 2012, her life turned upside down and the unthinkable happened. And that is when I basically walked outside to my own murder. I'm woken up in the middle of the night, um, phone calls over and over and over. I remember like being tired and I looked at my phone and it was him. He said, if I could just see you one more time, I'll never bother you again. I'm in your neighborhood, I'm just around the corner. If I could just see you for two minutes. Um, he said, after everything we've been through over the last two years, you can't just give me a hug. He said, we need to have closure. And so when he put his arms around me for a hug, he flipped it open and stabbed me immediately in my shoulder and then in the back of my neck. And the third one was um, on the side of my face here. And at that moment, I knew that this is a fight for my life and he is going to kill me. And I knew that during the attack, that I couldn't just scream, I had to scream for help. Two people heard Melissa's cry to help and called 911. He knew that witnesses were there. He figured that this has to be done quick. And that's when he came back again. And I remember him stabbing me in the neck. Um, but this is where everything's really blurry. And the next thing I know, I just, I remember watching him walk away with the knife in his hand back to his truck. I watched his truck just drive away. And that's when I felt myself taking my last couple breaths and I said, this is it, I know this is it. So my prayer changed and I said, please forgive me for my sins and take me to heaven. And at that same time is when a spotlight uh, shined its light on me. And I said, I'm Melissa Dome, I'm 20 years old. My ex-boyfriend, Robert Burton did this. He left in a 99 red Ford Ranger pickup truck and I was able to say all of this. Melissa was airlifted to a level one trauma unit and in the helicopter, she received the first of many life-saving blood transfusions. I was told that they replaced my entire blood volume twice. I was given 12 units total. I died literally four times there in the ER and they just kept, they said, you know, I wasn't giving up and they weren't gonna give up. So they just kept uh, giving me more blood and filling, you know, my blood volume back up. I am very, very, very thankful to all the blood donors that have given the gift of life because they have saved my life. I've always been very passionate about donating blood and being a blood donor, not knowing I would ever be on the receiving end. Thanks to the help from doctors and blood donors, Melissa survived the attack. I was okay with being single forever. I never wanted to date another guy, just I never wanted to even go there. I just was happy. I was alive and safe and just here. Months after the incident, Melissa was invited to meet part of the team that rescued her that night. That's when she met Cameron, the first responder that helped take Melissa from the ambulance to the helicopter. I did look, you know, as I'm transferring her over, and I just, I saw a girl that was in pretty bad shape. But I, I just had a weird feeling that I would see her again. It's crazy the way life works out sometimes, and I believe that he is my fairy tale ending, my friend's charming. Um, Meeting him has changed my whole life, and we're actually engaged now. Cameron proposed to Melissa at a baseball game. We told her that she was going to be throwing out the first pitch for domestic violence. We just came up with the idea that I was going to bring her the ball, you know, like they forgot the ball out on the mound. And on the baseball, it says, will you marry me? Um, and at that same moment of me looking at it, he got down on one knee um, and asked me, and I was so surprised. <laughs> I think I could have almost fainted. <laughs> Melissa says the blessings since that night keep on coming. After extensive surgeries to repair paralyzed nerves on the right side of her face, doctors say she will be able to have her smile back for her wedding. I would never want to go through what I went through again, but I also wouldn't change it because it's led me to feel that I have a life purpose. I'm strong, I'm empowered, I'm an advocate. I want to reach out and help other people and be the voice for those who are either hiding in silence or the voice of those who 
are forever silenced because their abuser succeeded in taking their life. Melissa continues to be an advocate for blood donations and domestic violence awareness to help others also have a second chance at life. From the bottom of my heart, um, with every ounce of my being, I am thankful that you donated uh, to save me and giving me a chance of life again and giving me a chance to live and be an advocate and speak out and save as many lives as I can. For One Blood, I'm Stephanie Zorin.